Good Tuesday morning. <clears throat> Pastor Rob here. Good morning. Just want to say hey to everybody. I'm looking, uh, man, I've had a lot of conversations this week. Um, it's been an exciting time after the George Floyd incident to talk to people uh, of all races uh, all around uh, the town here and even on the internet. Been some great conversations and some of the people that I talked to have said it's it's been a long time coming to be able to sit around and have conversations. Conversations without judgment conversations that you can just open up, share your feelings, and try to get to the root of the issue that we're dealing with in America. One of the things I refer to when I'm talking to people is Romans chapter 1, where God, or Paul's writing, and he's very clear of what a society looks like without God. Um, and, and by the way, I think this moment in history right now in the United States, maybe across the world, as tragic as it may be, is, a, is an opportunity. We can look at this as an opportunity, number one, to begin conversations that need to be had. Number two, it's an opportunity for the church to reestablish itself as a leader, not only in, in spiritual things, uh, religious things, as steering people to Jesus Christ, but in race relations and unity. We have lost our foothold of influence in many places as a church to reach out to the community and to be in positions of influence uh, in boards and councils and things like that. And I think this is an opportunity for the church to step up. So if you look at Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth. They suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal powers and divine nature has been clearly visible. And so what has happened is if you look at Romans 1 and continue through there, it shows how bad a society could get the further and further we catacon his, his knowledge. In other words, we push God down. The more we do that, the, the, the greater opportunity evil has to rise up. The Greek word we use is catacon. It means pulled down or suppress the knowledge, and then God eventually gives us over to those decisions, gives us over to those lifestyles that we've wanted, or we think we want, because he steps out of the picture first, to a certain extent. And this is what happens. Uh, as you go on, Romans chapter 1, verse 29, it says, they've become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They're gossip, slanders, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, boastful inventors of ways of doing evil things and so on and so on and so on a godless society can never be united out of the many one e pluribus unum the united states are we really doing it were we ever really a nation that was one i hope so i like to think so that there was a time uh in christ that we were united but but you know when i was talking to some of the, the black individuals that i know we have we addressed the issue of slavery were we really ever reunited reunited when we're buying and selling human beings. And I would say that during the Civil War, a lot of this was resolved, or at least was the beginning of the resolution. A lot of white people died to end slavery. A lot of people look at the streets today in these riots. It's, it's a good split of races. So you see there's the potential for unity here now. But this is an opportunity for the church to step in and show how to get that unity, what that means, and the, the source and the common ground we can all have right now is the cross of Christ, the way God designed us to live peacefully with one another. And just to look at a few of those things, I want to look here. The church needs to take this role. We need to step up. I don't know what I can do, but I'll be willing to do whatever it is to step in, start a movement, march in the street, whatever we have to do as brothers in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, it says we need to live a life worthy of the calling. We need to be humble. We need to be gentle. We need to be patient. This is the Bible. This is what we people think they don't want. But this is right in the Word of God. Humble, gentle, patient, bearing one another in love. Because we want to keep the unity. Make every effort to keep the unity out of the many one. Keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There's one body. There's one Spirit. Just as you were called together in hope and when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Everybody. Jesus didn't die on the cross 
uh, so that somebody could come to him only to hear this question, well, what color are you? I didn't die for you. Jesus didn't care what color anybody was. He didn't care how much money they made. He didn't care what they looked like. He died for all mankind. This is the gospel. This is the Bible. United, all united in one body under Christ. And, and we're missing the picture right now. We've missed it in this nation because we've pushed God out. But this is an opportunity for the church to step back. And this is an opportunity as a believer to step in with this type of authority from the Word of God and say, this is what the Bible says. So if you look more, look into Galatians chapter 3.26. It says, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. How do we become one? Through faith in Jesus Christ. Christ breaks down our borders. For uh, 27, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew or Greek. Why? Because we look like Jesus Christ. And he's not ashamed to be associated with us. There's no slave. There's no free. There's no male. There's no female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. I love that's Ephesians chapter 3 verse 26. This is the Bible. This is what the world has been pushing out. I think mostly, maybe, is because they don't read it. However, when Jesus was here preaching, they didn't want him either, many people. But there were a lot of people that followed him. There were a lot of people. Look at the gospel message today has been going on for, two, uh, for several centuries. And we can still do that. And the church needs to step back into that influential role to unite society, to unite the United States, to give us a, a foundation to build upon. And the only way that's going to ever happen is the church. You can throw money in all these situations until people have a voice, until we have a common ground, until we get to the root of the problem, we're not going to solve anything. And right now, I believe the biggest problem we have in this country is a heart problem. Denzel Washington even said, it's a family problem. There was a time when kids were accountable, when a man raised a man, a woman raised a woman, and then we raised our children to have respect, to say sir, to say ma'am, to say please, to say thank you. And we're no longer doing that. We need to do better at it, and the church should be leading the way. So I was just looking at that, Romans chapter 1. You can look at Matthew 22. Again, we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourself. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, it says, Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. As a matter of fact, it says the whole law and the prophets are fulfilled in this one verse. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. This is the gospel message. We need to preach the gospel. We need to step up in authority through the power of the Holy Spirit as believers in Christ and say, yeah, we're sick of this too. We're tired of racism. We're tired of abuse. And you can't blame this all on the police. There's bad eggs in the, in the hospitals. There's bad eggs in the attorneys. There's bad truck drivers. There's bad grocery stores. There's bad clerks. And, you know, and most of the people overall want to do a good job and go home tonight to their families. And so you can't play all this blame on the police, but we certainly should be opening conversations and the church needs to interject itself into these conversations. We should be leading the way. We know the truth. We have the truth. We need to stand on the truth. And I'm just here to say, you know, I've had several conversations, business owners, we have Athletes Without Borders, uh, Pastor Ray Sidnor is doing an excellent job with that organization. All us guys coming in from all over the country talking on Sunday nights about these issues. And one of the things that was brought up was this unity issue. Has the church ever really been united? As a believer, when you, if you weren't a believer, if you drove down the street, would you want to be a part of a church? Because it sure is confusing when there's seven churches on every block. And one's Presbyterian, one's Pentecostal, one's Catholic, one's Baptist, one's Methodist, one's Church of Christ, one's First Church of Christ. One got cut in half and they took their half to the other edge of town. I mean, look at this. What is the church doing? We need to be united in Christ. One cause. One God, one people, one Holy Spirit, one family in Jesus Christ.